geared steam locomotives? What do you mean steam locomotives have gears? Oh my goodness, look at the funny gears. Look at, look at them. Look at those funny, funny gears. Why do you have such funny gears? Explain yourself. Well, as, as the name implies, uh, a geared steam locomotive is just a type of steam locomotive which uses a gearing system at some point in their drivetrain. Most traditional steam locomotives have direct drive. There's no gearing involved, but geared steam locomotives do. See, geared steam locomotives, generally speaking, are not very fast. They don't go at very high speeds, but what they do provide is a tremendous amount of tractive effort. Because of the gearing system, they can apply a lot more force given the amount of power they're working with, and they often allow for a better adhesion factor, meaning they can usually handle much steeper grades. Meaning that, historically speaking, geared steam locomotives were often used in mining and logging operations, particularly in very mountainous terrain. Because, well, traditional locomotives just couldn't handle it. For those of you youngins out there that only get your facts from your memes or whatever, let me put it this way. A traditional steam locomotive is like, oh, is that a hill? Is that more than 2%? Scary. I don't think I can go up that hill. I don't wanna. Whereas a geared steam locomotive is more like, WHERE'S THE FRICKIN' MOUNTAINS?! They just don't care nearly as much about hills. And the idea of putting a gearing system in steam locomotives is almost as old as steam locomotives themselves. Richard Trevithick's Colebrookdale locomotive used a large gear to link the crate shaft to the driving axles instead of side rods, giving it a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Other early designs also utilized gears. Those early designs allowed them to use pretty small driving wheels without sacrificing speed, though eventually speed was kind of the deciding factor as the direct drive side rod designs became exceedingly popular as they could go really, really fast. The gearing systems often limited this at a certain point, but they still had their uses particularly once the technology was developed into very key designs. When it comes to geared locomotives, there are exactly three major types. There are a lot more than three in total, but there are three main ones that you hear about the most. Consider it the holy trinity of geared steam locomotives. And the first and most popular was known as the Shea. The original Shea design was developed by a man named Shea. Ephraim Shea constructed the original Shea. The technology would develop into a slightly bizarre looking engine at first glance due to the offset boiler. Shea boilers aren't centered, they're slightly to the side, and this is because the multiple cylinder engine that drives them is on the other side. It's a balancing thing. Despite building the thing in his garage, the Shea design proved to be incredibly successful. Lima would be responsible for building the majority of the Shays, and they were easily the most numerous type of geared steam locomotive around. But they weren't the only ones, as I said, there were two other main types. There were also the Climax locomotives. This design featured two inclined cylinders driving a transverse crankshaft, at least the B and C types. There was also the A type, which had a vertically mounted marine type steam engine. But when most people think of the Climax type, they're thinking of the B or the C. And some loggers considered the Climax superior to the Shea in hauling capability and stability. The reason for this is that Climaxes came with a fully sprung truck arrangement. The Shea's didn't have any springs on the bogey on the drivetrain side of them, meaning that despite the fact that they could go around tight turns, the Climaxes were actually better at that. And the third main type of geared steam locomotive was the Heisler which utilized a V-twin arrangement, one cylinder on each side of the boiler. Those cylinders were connected to a centrally located longitudinal drive shaft, which was geared to their driving wheels. Heislers were usually pretty limited in terms of how big their firebox could be because of the center drive, meaning that they often didn't have as much power as the other two types, but they were faster than the other two. Not by a whole heck of a lot. None of the geared locomotives were particularly very fast. 
but the Heistlers were the fastest. So depending on the needs, a Heistler may be the best option just because of that, but it varied. And the point is, all types were available, and you could get them for your logging or mining operations in rugged terrain, where a regular traditional steam locomotive just wasn't gonna cut it. And the geared engine saw tremendous success over the decades, mostly in North America. We loved geared steam locomotives here. I know recently we've talked about other countries and how we did our own thing, but in this case, this was our own thing. We loved the gears, the gears, the gears, the gears, all over North America. We were just like, yes, yes, steampunk nonsense, absolutely. But some were exported. South America had quite a few, and there were a handful in Australia and New Zealand. And at least a single Shea, at some point, wound up in the UK. The British found her a little funny, because she was, but she plucked along for them for quite a while, but it is believed that it was the only time a Shea wound up in Britain. They didn't have nearly as much mountainous terrain to deal with compared to, say, us. I mean, we have the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains over here, so it kind of makes more sense. In South America, they have the friggin' Andes. I mean, you know, it's one of those things. Because unless you were dealing with an area of very rugged terrain with a lot of grades beyond the means of regular steam locomotives to handle, geared steam locomotives usually weren't very helpful because, well, that was their big advantage. Colossal tractive effort at low speeds and high adhesion factor, but always low speeds. They just couldn't go very fast. So they were a niche thing, but in that niche, they were phenomenal. But as I said before, the three main types are just that, the three main types. There were others. Now, yes, quite a few, and some were in Britain. Yes, y'all did have some geared locomotives. You didn't have nearly as many as us, nor did you have very large ones usually, but you did have them. You just may not have known. They were secret. Super secret. Shh. Don't tell anybody. For example, the Sentinel Wagon Works built a whole bunch of geared shunting locomotives. And these were mostly vertical water tube boiler designs. In fact, as I mentioned vertical boilers, I should probably stress, uh, most of the vertical boiler coffee pot style locomotives are geared. They are. It's not obvious, but they are. That's how they work. Granted, uh, not all of them are. The ones made by DeWinton and Company in Wales, uh, they didn't gear theirs. But a lot of the others were. So, that's something to consider as well. Aveling and Porter made a few that were basically just traction engines, but with railroad wheels. That was, that was the whole thing. That was, that was it. And a lot of theirs used a sprocket chain drive. They were very, very low tech, but they did work. Avonside Engine Company in England produced a rather small amount of narrow-gauge geared steam locomotives for sugarcane plantations in Natal. They were relatively similar to Heistler's in overall design, so that's kind of neat. And moving beyond just Britain, there's also New Zealand. Yeah, randomly, New Zealand. They had a few homemade versions of the Climax and the Heistler, but uh, there was also a type that was called the 16-wheeler. This is because that under the white notation, you could describe it as a zero, four, 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 zero. Yes, really. And that thing was made by Johnson Brothers. And it appears very slapped together. Also, it did work. So I guess you can't say much about it. New Zealand had a few and got quite a bit of use out of them. And jumping back to America real quick, there was also the Willamette locomotive. Now you're probably looking at this and saying, wait, 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 wait. That's, um... That's a Shea. Yes. But also no. The Willamette is, in effect, an improved Shea clone. Built by the Willamette Iron and Steel Works of Portland, Oregon. They had waited for certain patents associated with the Shea to expire. And once they did, it was therefore legal for other manufacturers to produce engines that were very much, well, like Shea's. Except not exactly. Most of the differences were meant to be improvements on the Shea. Although it is worth mentioning that Lima had created what was called a Pacific Coast Shea. They wound up sharing many of the features that the Willamettes had. But regardless, a Willamette type will, for one thing, almost always have superheaters installed. Shea's usually didn't have those, but the Willamettes did. 
The boiler parts of a Willamette were riveted together rather than simply bolted. They used Walshart's valve gear driving piston valves, while Shays used the Stevenson valve gear driving slide valves. The truck design was completely different, and as a result, the Willamettes tended to ride a lot smoother than Shays. The rear cylinder on the Willamette was facing the same direction as the rest of the cylinders, whereas on a Shea, the rear one faces backwards, while the other two face forwards. Also, the rear cylinder on a Willamette was moved forward of the cab. The valve chests were turned outward, which rendered pretty much all the cylinders completely identical, making maintenance a lot easier. And when compared, the Willamettes proved that they could pull a little bit more weight, as well as using less fuel when compared to the Shays. They were also almost all oil burners. Only a single one of the Willamettes burned coal. A total of six Willamettes survive into preservation, just to be clear. In any event, there's quite a number of geared steam locomotives that I haven't talked about yet. Maybe we'll make another video about them. I just wanted to give you an overview. And I think I already went into way too much detail. But you're probably asking, where can I go to see a geared steam locomotive? Tell me. Tell me now, darkness. I demand to know. Well, first of all, you need to chill. Second of all, uh, Cass Scenic Railroad. Easily the best place to go in America. They only use geared steam locomotives and feature the largest remaining and last Shea ever built. Western Maryland Railway number six, who is a big, big girl at 162 tons. They also have both a Climax and a Heisler, meaning that they can show you all three of the main types. They aren't the only ones that have them, but Cass is held in high regard. Over in New Zealand, they have quite a few places with both Heislers and Climaxes in preservation. In the UK, well, you won't find that Shea they had, but you will find plenty of coffee pots, particularly the Sentinels. At the end of the day, what more can I say? But don't underestimate the gears. The funny... Funny gears! Where's the friggin' mountain? Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.